Hello and welcome to this session. Here we are going to be using the Migration Wiz tool to migrate accounts from the GoDaddy tenant, so an M365 hosted Microsoft 365 tenant, into a standard M365 tenant. We're going to be taking uh, some email addresses that we've got set up inside GoDaddy and bringing them into a tenant that already exists into a, a company setup. I'm going to show you how we use the Migration Wiz tool to achieve that. Now it is essentially the same as a standard M365 migration, but there are a few little nuances that you need to be aware of at the start and also at the end, how to get the domain out of the GoDaddy environment and into the standard M365 tenant. And also about the, the initial setup, about what to do with the admin users and really how to set up things so you can move the data in the first place. So let's have a look at the GoDaddy tenant and see what it looks like. So looking in the GoDaddy side of the house, we can see we've got a very standard console here. We can see one user we have set up, which is Ernest Penfold. We're going to move his data from his email address, and we're going to move that domain across from the dangermousefilms.com. We're going to move that into another tenant as well. So I'm going to show you how we do we go about that. We are going to be contacting the support at GoDaddy to let them achieve that in the back end for us once we've finished migrating all the mail across. So what we need to do, though, is we need to get the, the correct admin user. Now I know that we have one admin user, you always have an admin user on GoDaddy, and we only have one set up in this tenant, so it is Ernest who is the admin. We need to get the actual admin account and the on Microsoft.com tenant name to really achieve this migration. We also then need to add the application impersonation in there as well. So let's just run through those steps and I'll show you how that can be achieved. So we'll start off by logging in Penfold into the Office portal. I just go straight to portal.office.com. We'll put his credentials in. Like so then take us to the GoDaddy sign in page, which we'll then do with his password and sign in there. And that'll take us to the normal 365 experience that you would expect. And if we jump into Outlook, You'll see he has a normal working account with some newsletters that I've obviously subscribed him to. So we've got a bit of mail to play with in there. So that's that's where we want to be. Now, the reason we've logged in here is because now it's quite easy for us to jump in and go to the Azure portal. So Portal.azure.com, that'll drop me straight in there. And what we want to look at is the Azure Active Directory. Now, this does if this doesn't show up on this quick bar here, you can just find it just on the left hand side here and Azure Active Directory. Now from here, this is one of the key parts of information we need, which is the primary domain that's been set up. But we also need to know what the, the admin account looks like. You can see, although Ernest is an admin, we do have a proper admin account as well. And it's this guy that we're particularly interested in. So we're going to copy that out to clipboard and just pop that into Notepad just to keep that for later on. You can see there, I like to keep that in there just as a, a quick scratch pad. What we will do is we'll go into this admin user and we're going to reset the password. So we do that and hit reset password. And that is our temporary one there that we'll use to log in with. So I'll drop that into the scratch pad as well. Obviously, I'm going to be changing this by the time I publish this video so you won't see it. But uh, now we're going to log in as that user. Just open up another in private window. We'll go to the portal.office.com. We'll log in as that user. So let me just grab that from the notepad. This one here, and you do exactly the same thing as this. Log in here, and let's see, just grab that password as well. And drop that in there. It will then ask us to update it. Now, this is because we, ha we have to log in here because we cannot log in to the migration services with a temporary password. It's not going to let us do that. So we'll do that and sign in. And that will let us into the standard portal like this. Now, the, the only reason for going in here at all was just to go in and change that password. So just as quick as we went in, I'm going to close that. I do not need that anymore. And this one can go as well. In fact, I'll get that because that is not the password anymore. Now, all of these steps for setup are in the Bittide and Help Center. I'm going to show you what I'm working from here so you can follow along when you do your own migrations. I'm going to type in GoDaddy here, and you can see straight away we've got some guidance here. This is the one I'm looking at. 
if we click into this one, you'll see there's our GoDaddy hosted exchange guide. And if I just run down a little bit, not too fast, but what you'll see is here preparing the source. This is about the reset password is good. Now it does talk about creating the project, but I'm going to jump a little bit ahead just for now because I want to do this manual granting the application impersonation rights and, and just run through that quickly. We can let my the migration with client try and do it in the back end. I find that obviously with the GoDaddy side of the house, it actually is good to, to do this before you start creating the project just to get it in. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now. What I'm going to do is use the the PowerShell window to connect to the Exchange Online backend. Now, that was the whole reason for setting the admin password. We do that as the admin user that we've just reset that password on, rather than trying to use the Ernest Penfold, who, like I say, is an admin, but it actually works fundamentally better if we're using that admin account that's the core of the GoDaddy M365 tenant. So I've started in a, a PowerShell window as administrator. And we first thing we'll do there is connect to Exchange Online. It will ask me then what uh, user we want to log in as. And we're going to give it that admin account that we had earlier. So I'll just cut and paste from the scratch pad. You can see why I keep a scratch pad now. It's very easy to do that. And put our password in. Like so sign in there. And that connects, as you can see, in the back end, as you would expect. Now, looking at the instructions here we've got to enable organization customization so that's good we'll jump back in there and we'll do that like so okay it's going to ask us to confirm obviously it's the first time this has been run inside that tenant now just to be aware that if it is the first time you've run it against the tenant uh, it will take a little while to go through so we're just going to sit and hang while that does that and just a note too, if you run it twice, three times, four times, doesn't matter. It will just tell you that it's already been run as it does so. And there we go. It just comes back to a blank line. No errors. It means it has gone ahead and done that. Now, the next line we need is this one here, a new management role assignment. I will just cut and paste this out. Like so jump back in here, paste that in. And we need to tell it what user we are going to use for that which will come back to our scratch pad back into here and put that in and run that. And you can see it gives us this error. Now, if we were on a normal M365 tenant, not a GoDaddy one, that would most likely work, but it looks like it hasn't. So there is a workaround for that. We need to go and add it in through the GUI inside the Office 365 Exchange backend. So let me show you how we can do that. So we're going to jump into the window we had with the Azure. Now, this is still logged on as Penfold, not as the admin user, but Penfold is an admin. They're both admins in their own right, but not, not logged in as this guy here. So we're logged in as Penfold. Now, what we would do there is we go to a new tab and put in this URL, which you can see is the Exchange Control Panel part of Outlook system. Anybody that's used an on-prem Exchange Server will know this ECP side very well, and this is the old one. Now, the tricky part here is I can go into the admin roles and have a look at those, but they're going to be blank. There's nothing there because they've been removed and they are in the what they call the new Exchange Admin Center. So we just hit the try now and get into that. This is where we need to be. Now, where we find that is we look under roles and you'll find the admin roles are here. And this looks a bit more interesting. This is all our our roles inside the GoDaddy tenant. Now it won't have the application impersonation as a role group already. It's not going to be there. So we need to go and create it. So let's go to add role group and we'll put this in. I'll put, um, I'll put the same thing in there. And default right script, that's that's our only option. So no problem there. And what permissions we're going to add. Now, what we need to do is we need to go right down the bottom and go past all of this. It's actually underneath because it's no space, application impersonation, and right down the bottom, we need the view only config as well. If we go down here, you should find, sorry for the excessive scrolling, it's view only configuration, that guy. So we hit next on that. 
Then we need to assign some members. Now I'm going to assign in the admin user that we use for the tenant. Now if I just do a search here, you'll find a lot of them will come up. But it's actually this top one here. It says dangerfoundsfilms.com. That is the actual username. You might have seen that in the Azure portal before. That is the username of that admin account. So we hit that, and hit next, and add the role group in. And there we go, it's been added. Now we'll jump back into here, and I'm going to take this command again. I'm just going to edit it very slightly, but easier to do it. And we're going to get role assignment for application impersonation and see what that looks like now. And we can see that it has the uh, application impersonation right in there and uh, is now created. Looks like we are good to go with that one. Now, our next step in the migration is a standard task, which we would do with any migration with project, which is to set up the application uh, in, for the mod north. Now that has to be done through the Azure uh, AD side as well, which is with the screen I'm at right now. And if I just jump back to the help desk article, this one here, you can see it talks about this item here, the modern authentication requirements, and it has all the instructions listed here. So that's all good. Let me just bring that up. I'm just going to run through those on the other screen and show you how that can be done quite quickly. So in the Azure tenant, you go down here and find app registrations, and we say new registration and give it a name. So we'll call it uh, migration with. We select the second one down here, accounts in any organization directory, and we have to put the redirect in as well. And we call that the public native. Now we grab that URL. If I go across to the screen again, see the instructions, you can see that is it there. So I just do that and copy that in. In here and hit register. It'll set it up for us. That's the first step on the on the application. Now from this screen, we will need to record these items here. So the application client ID, I'm going to take the whole thing and just put it back into our scratch pad there. And also the directory one as well. Grab the whole thing there. Pop that in there. Then we'll go to the authentication tab and just come down a little bit because we need to turn on the enabling the mobile and desktop that needs to be on to yes and hit save. And then we can go back to our overview. Now we need to give this application some permissions. So we do that by going into API permissions. And we've got these ones already. You can remove that if you don't uh, want to. We don't use that one. There's a standard default one that goes in. But we need to say add a permission. And we'll go to APIs that my organization uses. And we can type in Office. And it will come up with that. It's the Office Exchange Online is the one we're after. We need delegated permissions. And under here, I'm just going to choose the EWS and tick that one there. And just hit Add Permissions. Go into this screen. As you, I said before, we can remove this one. We'll take that one out. We don't need that. What we will need to do is grant the admin consent. Do that here. Hit Yes. And that gives us a little tick there. And then we'll jump back to our main screen. Now, to make it a bit easier for the advanced options of the project later, what we'll do is we'll take these items and we're going to create what we're going to put in the advanced options. If I go back to the help desk article, you'll see we want to have them in this format. So we're going to grab this one first. So that's the client ID export. So we'll copy that into here and just pop that in front and we'll say this guy here is a tenant id this one here put the equals in now it is very important that you get these just right obviously the they are case sensitive so if you were to type it in and you even put the id wrong if you put a lowercase for the id that's not going to work you have to, so the best idea is to use the copy paste out of the article and then get those done. And then there's your correct IDs based on the client and the tenant IDs. Now it's called the export. This is the export because this is the source that you're coming from. It's where you're exporting the data from. 
good way to remember that one. It is the source. So that is all set, ready to go. While I'm in here, um, I'm just going to grab these ones here for the import as well, just to make it easier to pop those in later. And grab that one as well. Like so, and we'll spec those up once we do the destination side. Now, just in the interest of a more concise uh, and quick video, um, I've done the same application registration on the target tenant uh, and just pop those in there. It's exactly the same as the source tenant. So you're just grabbing, doing exactly the same task and grabbing those client ID and tenant IDs and putting those in there. So that's all done. Now we're going to go across to the Migration Wiz console and we're going to log in and we're going to create this project. Then sign in on the BitTitan console. There we go. And that will take us to our main screen. I'm going to say create a new project, which will be a mailbox project. And we start the normal, the normal setup. I'm going to call this one just GoDaddy migration. And the customer, I will create a new one. And that will be not like that. So jumping into the BitTitan main screen here, we'll hit sign in in there and with our projects we'll go ahead and create a new project which will be a mailbox project there we go and we'll just give it a quick name we'll just call this one godaddy migration and we're going to create a new customer for this one so we hit new and put in that basic data there and hit save and go to our next step now this is the source endpoint that we're going to be connecting to so we haven't set one up already on this migration with console for this client already. So let's go ahead and create a new one. So we just hit new there and we give it a name of the endpoint. Now this name is just for us. That doesn't do anything else in terms of uh, any setup. We will go, however, and choose Microsoft 365. We don't have to specify any particular GoDaddy items in here. It is a standard Microsoft 365 account. But under the username and password, we need to go back back to our scratch pad again and we'll grab that admin user and put the admin user in here. And grab this guy and we'll put him in and the password. Like so. Now that is our nope, we don't want to put that into last pass. Thank you. And there we have the the source settings. So we hit next step there. And now we get to put the endpoint for the destination. I'll say new on that as well. And we'll give that one a name too. And that is my, my normal TCG E5 demo tenant, the one I've used previously on other videos, but that's the same. So I'll put in the admin password as well there. Like so, hit add there. And go on to that again, thank you. And next step there. And we are not going to be configuring any type of coexistence for this project. We don't need that. We're going to leave that one empty and hit save, go to the summary, and you'll see that's where we are there. Now, what I will do at this point is I will go one stage further. If we save project, it will jump into the project itself. What I'm going to do is go straight into the advanced options here for the project, and we're going to put those items in for the, uh, for the client and the tenant IDs for the source and the target. So the easiest way here is I'm just going to hit plus, do that four times, create four of those and jump into here and just grab each one of those like so and drop those in. Just like that and hit save. Of course that goes in and we go and save our project and we are in the standard project screen. Now a quick look at the target tenant and you can see here I need to add a user uh, we would normally, you might have an automated process. You could have an AD, uh, Azure AD Connect, feeding up those identities there. But essentially, we do need a place to have Ernest Penfold's data live. And he needs to have an account on the target tenant. He needs to have it licensed and a mailbox live so we can transfer that, that data over. So I'm going to create a brand new user for him just very quickly and have him set up. Now, what I will show you in here is on the GoDaddy side, his email address was just penfold at dangermousefilms.com. We can't bring dangermousefilms.com over yet until we extract it from the GoDaddy domain, which we can't do until we've migrated all the data and we effectively turn that all off. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be setting him up with another domain, planium.com, but also I'm going to change his username because the penfold doesn't meet the criteria of this particular account. Let's let's say the uh, they're going from a small company to a large one, so obviously just the name is not going to work too well. So I'm going to make him earnest.penfold. I'll show you in the console how we match those up. So obviously we're taking data from penfold at dangermousefilms.com into earnest.penfold at planium. Once we're done with the migration, we will be assigning him the dangermousefilms.com domain as well. So this is just a temporary step while we get the data over there and we'll see how that looks in the console. So a quick look at his account, we can see he's configured and he has a mailbox and that's good to go. I'm gonna go into another browser. This is why we have so many different browsers available to us. But if I look at uh, another browser, I've just logged on as ernest.penfold at planium.com in that uh, target tenant. And if I go into Outlook here, we should see a blank. Yeah, we do see a blank mailbox, which is good. And that's obviously a live mailbox. We can email to it if we need to and, and do that. So really, we're, we're configured to set up. We've got the GoDaddy all prepared and all done. We've got the, the target account ready to receive data and ready to, to go. So now let's let's add those email addresses into the Migration Wiz console, and we'll get that migration started. Obviously, different ways to bring data in. Bulk add, you can auto discover. I'm just going to do a quick add which is just these names here, which I'll type in, Beck. Now there's different ways you can get the data in there. We could do a bulk ad if we had a big spreadsheet of all the names, we can auto discover. We've only got one, so we're going to use the quick ad option, which will then let us just type these names in. Which I've done there, and save item and close. That will drop us back to the main screen, and we'll see now we've got the information up on screen here. So. You can see that's where I was talking about the matching. We don't have to have the names exactly right. We can say penfold, danger mouse films to earnest.penfold at planium.com. And remember, we are going to be changing this destination to dangermousefilms.com at the end. So I'm going to show you how to do that, how we contact support, get the dangermousefilms.com released from the 365 tenant, and then we can add it into our uh, proper tenant over this side. So first step, I'm going to apply the license. In here, use the migration bundle and just do that quite quickly. Here, hit apply, and that will take a few minutes to apply, but that'll hit the yes on there, and that means we can uh, we can move forward. It's licensed, but the next step really is to verify the credentials, and that's the first step of any migration: is to verify that the source and target are configured correctly, and it can see the mailboxes, it can pick up the data, and it can do something with it. So. We will do that first. Just wait for that license to appear. So I'll just refresh that and that should happen for us. We'll just hit the refresh here. And yeah, there we go. So what we'll do is we'll just hit the tick box next to this and we do the start and we do verify credentials. And hit OK there. And that will go off and do its thing. We'll come back in a few minutes and see what it looks like. So after a refresh, we get completed verification with a tick. That's always really good news when you when you see that. So that's good. We are ready to go ahead with this migration. So what we do to start that off, we will do the little tick here and we say start. Now we can do a pre-stage first and then a full migration. The pre-stage is really good if you uh, have a lot of mail. It You could have the option to do everything from 30, 60, 90 days back or, or put a, a date and time in there backwards. But it means you can get, if you were doing a cutover, let, let's suppose a cutover on a Friday night and they had 20 gig of mail, you really want to be pre-staging everything into the account. So when you do the full migration, it's just going to do the remaining portion of that mail. It's, it's definitely a good practice to do that. In this particular migration, we don't have much mail and we certainly don't have anything older than 30 days. So I'm going to go straight away into a full migration. Uh, obviously, there's other videos on, on all the details about why a pre-stage or why a full. In this particular demo, I'm just going to go straight to the full. So we click on Penfold here and we do a full migration. And we have these options to choose from. And the main one is to say exactly what is being migrated inside the mailbox. Now, normally you'd, you'd want everything. Uh, if you don't want to bring contacts or don't want to bring calendars, just turn them off there. And you've also got the option to automatically start it at a particular time. You might say, I just want to kick it off at 10 p.m. and let it go. Uh, in this case, 
Once again, I'm just going to hit start migration and just do it immediately. Uh, the license has already been uh, checked on here, so that I'll go ahead and consume that one. And really, we'll just uh, sit back and watch that mail come into that mailbox now. So if I go into the other browser I had with his mailbox, we should see uh, items. I did put a uh, calendar entry in, a couple of contacts in there, and I made some subfolders as well. So we should see that start to appear once that kicks off and gets, gets running. As you can see from that, that was a quick little capture. I left the, the video running while it was doing the migration just to capture the point where the mail starts populating into the inbox. So that's what you just saw. So you can see mail is all here. So let's have a quick look at other things. Let's have a look at his calendar. And yeah, we have a calendar item that's come across. That's uh, certainly good. And in contacts, there should be a couple there. There we go, Bob and then myself as well. So. Really, I know it's a small mailbox, but effectively that has now come out of the, the GoDaddy. That is now inside a, a true M365 tenant in the uh, sense of the word. And now all that's left for us to do is finish off this migration by extracting that out. Jump back into the console and you can see it's completed. It's done a full migration. We are, we are good. So really what we want to do now is we want to take the dangermousefilms.com. We want to apply that to the other tenant. Now that's inside the Google, sorry, the, the GoDaddy uh, tenant side. So I do need to talk to support to get that done. So I'm going to show you what we do with that now. So in the GoDaddy console, we hit contact us. Now the nice thing is we can do the whole thing through chat. So we'll go in here, technical support, and my gosh, it's going to beep like that every time. <laughs> oh dear. That is very annoying. Let me turn that off for you. So we'll choose email as the item here. And you can see the ones here. And I'm going to say something else. What can we help with? Council. email account. Really what I want to do here is not necessarily do it through the little chat box. We need to be able to get a hold of a real person. So no. Let me just go through this so it's going to prompt us to get to talk to somebody effectively is what we're after. And there we go, transferring to a real person. And I can explain what we need to do. I'll choose tech support there. And it's email. Yes. <laughs> That's good. I will come back and show you what happens when we get to speak to the real person. Okay, we have somebody here. I'm going to type what we want to do. Uh, yeah, sure thing. I'll put my details in there. Pause that while I do it. So we're connected with a real person so I can start this chat. I will uh, put those details in and see what he says. Yeah, just telling him that I need to cancel and remove that M365 account and remove the domain from M365 environment as well. We'll probably start off wanting me to verify my identity, PIN number, all that sort of thing with a secure form. So we'll let him start with that. This doesn't take too long once you get into it. Once they, as long as you get a person that actually knows what you're talking about, it's done pretty quickly. But uh, and you'll see the time is on here 
uh, as we go through this chat. So keep an eye on that about how long it would take. Don't expect that you can just do this in a couple of minutes because often it can take a little bit longer. So prepare yourself for that. But well, let's see how long this particular one takes. So it's asking me, so you want to delete the domain and email account. I just want to make sure I'm correct there. Uh, and make sure I tell them the right thing. I want to retain the domain registration because it's new, but yes, I need to remove the email account and the domain I'll say that, from inside M365. All right, so this is that verification I'm talking about here. They'll ask you for the customer number and a PIN. You click on that, you'll get a secure form. So I'm just going to go ahead and put those in. Uh, you don't get to see them, so I just let it go through as I'm typing and see what he says with that. All right, he just sent a text to my phone asking me for that number. So, once again, it's not very much use to you guys, so I'll just type it in there. You can see it. And that should confirm that I am who I say I am with them. Okay, looking good here. That's the one that he's found. So, I'll say. Yes, that is the correct one. Now he's confirming the order number which I put the email account on. I do have other things on that order. So I'm just confirming with him to say only remove that email address. I do need to retain those domain registrations just to make sure he doesn't cancel the whole order thinking that's what I want to do. I'm just being very specific to make sure I don't run into any issues. Oh, looks like we might be getting some action. That is good. Oh, looks like that portion is done. I'll ask him about the domain now. That's obviously the key thing. I mean, I can go and delete an email address. That's no problem. Just making sure he's done. That piece too. He's probably going to do that next, I would say. And there we go. It has been removed by the look of that. Awesome. Thank you very much. And after that, we'll get the normal is there anything I can help you with? How do you rate the person? Would you suggest GoDaddy for any of your friends? All the normal stuff. So I'll go through and do that, give them a nice, a nice little review on that. And then we'll come back and just check it out, make sure it has gone from the from the GoDaddy site, and then we'll go and add it in. They do say a few hours, but but generally give it 30 minutes, maybe 45 at the most, and we are all good after that. There we go. Oh, no server. Oh, maybe get a survey. We'll see. But that's a nice thing. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll I'll do that and let's go and check out that uh, check out the domain now after this. Yeah, looking at that, the email dashboard now, check it out. The account is being deleted. That will drop off pretty soon, and we can add the account into the other tenant. So in the target tenant, we can just add the domain, and we'll put that in tentomousefilms.com, and that will know that it's on GoDaddy, and will ask us to do the verify, which we'll do. we just sign in and get that done. It always just presents us with that screen, which we do that sign in and verify. So I'll just do that quickly. And it then asks us to hit the connect. And there we go. Now you can see this is the error I was talking about. You can see that the venuemousefilms.com is already added to this. Now you'll remember this domain from when we're doing the admin side of the house. So you can see we do have to just wait a little bit for it to come back. So I'm going to. Um, just hit close on that and you can see now it's going to sit in this incomplete setup stage so uh, i'll give it an hour and then we can go back in and take this and uh and do that setup we, we would go back in and do the start setup and of course we get back to the same thing again uh, which we'll just go through and do once it does get released by the godaddy side that will then go through and be available for us to use so i'll come back shortly give it another try now Go into the engine mouse films we'll start the setup and let it do the authorization again so just verify that it'll ask us to 
Confirm with GoDaddy, just bring that down for you, for the connection. And then it should verify the domain and hopefully add it into the tenant. And it looks like it's uh, moving forward this time. So we'll do the connection for the DNS. The DNS won't change, obviously, because it's exactly the same from one tenant to another. So we should find that just letting this go through and add the DNS records in, we just tell it to add them in for GoDaddy. I'm happy for it to do that. It's not going to need to change anything. But we just go ahead and use what it has already. But it should mean that once it connects through and works, uh, yeah, domain setup is complete. There we go. And that will now give us, if I go back to the domains list, we should see, yes, here we are, Deja Mouse Films as a healthy domain, which is obviously a, a good sign. The last bit of setup we'll do, which would happen obviously over a lot of accounts if they were to, to need updating, but in this case, it's just earnest. I'm going to go into the username and email here. I'm just going to add in. Now, we're not going to add just the pen fold at Danger Mouse Films. We'll just add in his full name in here, first of all. Like that. Add that in. And as a second one, I'll add pen fold just so there's uh, a completeness. If he does get any emails going to that old address, we can have that sitting in there as well. And I will make this one here the primary email and save changes there should see those take effect pretty quickly so we've now got ernest.penfold danger mouse films as his upn and his primary email so we can do a quick test on that let's log in as him and send an email to that address to just just as a final check to make sure everything is correctly set up for him so we log in here into the office.com as that password and a quick authenticated check as well. There we go. Say no. And let's just run up Outlook and see his under there. Good, we've got mail from today. Good, we'll just send him a quick note as well. So just draft up a quick email for him, send there. And that should pop in pretty quickly, I hope. And there we go. It is. So he is receiving on that uh, UPN and that primary email address. Uh, everything looks good. So there we have everything completed. We have successfully moved an account from the GoDaddy M365 hosted system that they run into a full M365 tenant.